Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please consider subscribing. If you're returning, thank you very much. Nice to have you back. Um, today, I am gonna be going over how I created this project. It'll be a pretty high level overview. So if you understand Unreal and how to use it, you'll probably get a lot of good value out of this without having to go through an entire beginner tutorial. However, in a week from now, I will also be dropping a beginner tutorial, teaching you step-by-step -step how I create this project. That way you get the best of both worlds. So let's check out the render. Okay, and this is the inside of our project. Uh, we have our path here, um, our side rocks, as well as our nice foliage and our back castle over here, along with some fog and our nice blueprint for uh, our birds. So there's a bunch of different things within this project, uh, but the number one thing is kind of creating the landscape. So let me hide some stuff. Closing, closing. So when I first started this, I knew, I knew that I wanted a nice path and the castle to be kind of more on a hill. Um, so the main trial and error here was to try and get this ledge to be uh, a good height for our static meshes, uh, as well as kind of creating a nice flat surface to use for our path. So when you go over to landscape mode, the main things I used here was actually ramp. So if you click and click, you can decompress like how I did on this side by actually bringing it down. And then if I click add ramp, see how it kind of cuts that in to the actual ground. So that's really what I did. And I just kept playing around with how to use the ramp to kind of create this bottom piece and this top piece so our path can live. Once that was done, the rest is pretty easy. This is really just sculpting the landscape, making it large, and then flattening out a top surface for our castle, which realistically we didn't even need to do considering even if it clipped into the castle, it's not like you see it because the trees block it off. So once I was done with the landscape, the next thing I did was just focus on kind of keying up our shot. So before I did anything, I added in our camera actor uh as well as some actors um in this case i didn't start with our skeletons and our uh i guess undead army um i started with just a mannequin kind of set up actually exactly where uh this knight is along with the camera and then kind of just landed on a good shot to begin with after that it was all about bringing in some objects so in this case all of this path is something that was like self-designed. And I knew that the path, since that's gonna be the main focus, that kind of had to have the most detail. Um, so I took some time to kind of lay out a path with some rocks, uh, some side uh, kind of undergrowth, stuff like that, that made it still seem like it was a nice rough road, um, while also adding in some manually placed trees. Now, once that was done and I then probably also sculpted this landscape just a little bit so it fit this wall perfectly. Um, but once that was done, I really just focused on the foliage and the foliage really brings the entire scene to life. So once I turn on the foliage, this was really just using, and I can actually go into the foliage. This is really just using the European hornbeam set for the trees. And then in the background, I used wheatgrass as well as another grass that actually isn't wheatgrass, but it looks similar. So if I zoom in, you'll see there are some green grasses in here. On Fab, it wasn't actually labeled as wheatgrass, but I kind of like the mix instead of having it all be one color. So I added in kind of a mix of different grasses in here. 
and then finished off with just some weeds for our actual road throughout our scene, which I do think kind of helped bring everything together. Um, and then after all that, it was about the castle. So castle set is pretty simple. It's actually two separate castles. Uh, if you look at it, it's pretty low poly. Um, nothing too special here. It's actually like really low poly. Um, but when you're far away from the castle, it is hard to tell. I would say if you kind of look at the spires, if you look closely, especially to like this spire right here, it is very clearly kind of like wonky. But again, from a distance, you can't tell too much, which still kind of ties it all together. Um, so once all that was done, the next piece was really just bringing in a good environment. Um, so I used William uh, Foucher's Easy Fog, if I can find it somewhere in here. So this is the Easy Fog cards, which I actually really enjoy using. Um, so if I just turn them all on, you can kind of see the difference in how it adds like just some nice texture to the overall trees, which I think really brings the entire scene together. And then after that, there was a bit of lighting that I needed throughout our scene to kind of just, again, add texture and contrast throughout the scene. I felt like this area on the left of the trees was a little dark. So if I actually turn all the point lights off, you can see it's just a really dark scene. Uh, there's not really a lot of texture to it. In fact, let me even go into the camera and kind of show you. So like, this is what the camera's seeing. Uh, our character's really dark. The trees don't really have a lot of contrast. Everything's just kind of bland. So what I did was, is I added in some point lights throughout our scene to kind of just add a little bit of texture, some highlights to our main actor. And then if you look over into the trees, You'll start to see some lights pop in the trees again adding some texture and then once that was done i wanted a nice directional light to hit from the right so i added in some spotlights that kind of one hit the castle and kind of brighten up the castle so it looks like a bright and sunny day and then another one to kind of hit the trees again adding some contrast adding some visual interest instead of just having a nice dark blink scene so once that was done the next piece is really all about the final touches. Um, so for me, final touches are actually really just jumping into sequencer and kind of finishing off our scene. So I made this all in one sequence, which you can tell it's just one solid shot. And then if I switch over here and kind of click play, you'll see that I have a bunch of dead frames. Uh, I'm actually hoping someone in the comments kind of helps me out here. So I have the birds added into the top, which I don't know if they restarted. They might show up. So I knew I wanted the birds to be in a certain place as the scene started, because I wanted it to be a nice, bright and beautiful day uh, with the birds kind of flying at the top of the screen. I don't think they are gonna show up. No, they aren't. Where are birds? Oh, did I, are my birds hidden? That might be the problem. Birds are hidden. Okay, so we go through this one more time. I wanted the birds to hit at a certain point, but I didn't know how to do like the in and out point on a, I guess it's a blueprint. So what I did was, is I just pushed the scene all the way back. So I knew the birds would start at the beginning of the scene, which is why we have a bunch of dead frames. I think it's close to even what, 800 dead frames. And then I knew I wanted the birds to be kind of going at this exact moment. So right now our scene starts, the birds are right in the sky. It's nice and beautiful. Um, and then we'll have our main actors kind of act in right after the fact, kind of walking in as we've switched all the lights over to green, kind of moved our sky to a more darker, hazier top. So now it looks a little more creepy as our zombies kind of enter in. So with this, the main thing I used here was I have this zombie pack. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. So it's this zombie pack right here. This is actually offered free one of the months, uh, either October through December. This was offered free via Quixel or the Epic Marketplace before Fab was released. So 
I think if you go on it now, this pack might be like somewhere in the hundreds, but I got it for free and I decided to use it. I would suggest if you do want to follow along on the future beginner tutorial that kind of go over how I created all this, I would suggest probably using something from Mixamo. But what I did was I used Mixamo animations, just grabbed your normal Mixamo character. In fact, I can show you the animation. Uh, so I just grabbed the normal character, typed in zombie, and then, oh, sorry, this is not animations. So I'd say just grab like any of your zombie characters and the crawling skeleton is using this animation right here. And then I also did, I don't think I did the zombie running, but I did do this one where he's basically just hands outstretched, walking forward and moving a little slower. The other animation, because there are three animations used in this, the other animation is from the actual skeleton pack uh, with my static meshes or skeletons. Um, but all this can be achieved by just using Mixamo assets. The next thing is really just kind of keying in each little piece to this. So there is definitely a lot of like keying in all the different movements, the color changes for all the lights, all that stuff had to be keyed in. But at the end of the day, it's not anything technical as much as it's just busy work, kind of clicking on each little thing. I would say if you are using the camera sequencer and you're having a trouble uh, kind of finding the option you want to keyframe by like kind of going to skeleton, clicking the plus sign, and like you have all these different options and you can't really find the exact option you want. One other thing you can do is actually click on the skeleton. And if you look over here on the right, where it says animation mode, disable post-process blueprint, you'll see these little boxes. These are keyframe boxes. So if you find it here and you click it, it'll show up right here. So now I can keyframe our linear dampening. Um, so it's pretty handy whenever you're kind of working on this and you can't find something. There is other ways of kind of knowing where or how to add it in. Most of it is kind of going through the details panel and seeing what you can keyframe in the details panel versus kind of clicking the plus sign and trying to find it through all this menu, which personally is a little harder for me. The last one that I do want to go over here is actually our skybox. So if I open up the environment, the last thing that I'm doing here is actually not, um, let me get out of our camera. This is actually not our normal like sky that comes within Unreal Engine. This is uh, what you call a skybox. It is quite literally just a sphere blown up. Um, in fact, if you ever like watch my Mars and Earth, like how to make Mars and Earth, you usually create space by making a giant sphere, making that sphere two sided and making that sphere gigantic and then putting your world inside that sphere. And then you put the stars on the sphere as a mesh. So the everywhere you look is stars, but you're just in, basically in a giant ball. Very similar to how the universe works in general. So that is what you have here with the skybox. Um, this pack is a really cool pack that I've been trying to learn and kind of figure out how to use uh, to design my scenes more and more. But it is just one skybox mesh. Uh, this is like that one giant sphere and I can change things around to being what it is. I'll actually even have this, see, so like the sky is now different. Um, I can have this linked below if anyone wants to kind of check it out and see if they want it for themselves. But it's really just a bunch of like cool backgrounds that you can use. Uh, this is just like a fog or for a night sky, stuff like that uh, to kind of draw your scene together. Um, and then what you need to do when you're adding this in is you need to actually set the material itself to be the skylight or to be sky. If you don't, your uh, skylight won't work appropriately, neither will your directional light. But I would say if you just want a simple way of kind of understanding what this is, is it's basically an HDRI without being an HDRI. You'd use it very similarly, but I think this way of handling the sky came first. HDRIs are probably a, a higher um, higher definition version of a skybox, but both work just fine and both create really cool skies. The next thing I do wanna show is, I actually took advantage of this black line. I don't think this is something that is kind of meant to be shown, 
but I did like that it added like a darkness over the horizon behind it as if like a storm was coming. So I took advantage of it in my scene. I would say, I don't think it's meant to be seen as much as this part is meant to be seen. But again, use what's available to you to kind of create what you want to create. But yeah, that is our overview of how I created this project. If you are interested to actually get a step-by-step -step process or there's anything you kind of wanted to know more about, I will have a full beginner tutorial uh, dropping next week, kind of encompassing everything that I showed and went over today. So yeah, if you want to learn more, check that out. If not, I hope this was pretty valuable to you guys. And again, like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And I'll see you guys on the next one.